Hello guys and welcome back to the series on how to build a blog with Laravel. In this video, we'll be working on a comment section. We'll add a form to create a new comment. We will also add a button to delete a comment. And we'll add the comments pagination down below. And user can create a new comment. And let's hit the button. So let's begin so let's begin with creating a new comment model so let's open up the terminal and run an artisan command make model comment and let's pass a flag to create a migration file as well so model and migration was created so let's go to the create comments table migration file and let's define the table structure so the table will have a string called author and a text field called text to store the comment. So each of the comment will belong to a post. So let's add a ID pointing to the post in the post table. So it will be a foreign key called post ID that will point to the post table and when the post is deleted we want to also delete a comment so on delete cascade and now let's run the migrations so php artisan migrate and we can see that a new table was added to the database called comments so now let's go to the routes file uh, web.php and let's create a new route so route post to the posts let's provide the post parameter because the comment will belong to the post so comments and it should go to comments controller class and star method so now let's create a comments controller so php artisan make controller comments controller and let's import it at the top inside our outs so comments controller so let's go to the controller and let's create the star method public function star and let's also inject the post model into the method like we did in the post controller class so like we injected the post in the show page um, let's inject it inside this controller as well so post and let's import the post class um, use app models post and we also need to create a custom request class like we created in post controller store method to validate the comment input so again let's run the artisan command php artisan make request comments request um, let's go to the comments quest class um, let's delete this method because we don't need it at the moment and let's add the validation rules so for author it is a required input and it's a string and let's define a maximum of 255 characters and almost the same for text input it's required string and let's set the maximum of 500 characters so now let's inject comments request into the star method um, request and it was automatically imported by vs code editor so now we can create a comment so first of all let's get the data from the request validated and now we can create a new comment so comment equals new comment um, let's import the comment model so the comment post id will be equal to post id 
um, off or will be equal to data offer um, the same for text so let's fix the indentation and call a method comment save to start the comment into the database and for now let's just return comment so for now this will be good enough now let's start building the front end so let's go to post slash show page and we can close other windows so below the content area right here we can add a new heading and it should say comments and let's add some classes so it should have a margin on the top let's make the text extra large I'm leading 10 tracking tight font bold um, text color gray 900 um, text center and let's add a form below the heading so div form the form should have a class of margin bottom zero and the action should go to our new route that we have just created so posts post id slash comments and the method should be post so let's include the csrf token and let's start working on a form so first of all let's create a label for offer and it should have a class of text small uh, font medium and text gray 700 so now let's create an input name offer and class margin top one padding on the top and bottom of two padding on the size of three um let's give it a border and the border should be gray 400 let's make it rounded medium and shadow small and let's also make this input required so let's see now let's add another label but this time it will be for text and we also have to give it some margin at the top and for the text area so the name will be text and we can delete these attributes and just copy styles from the text input and it is also required so let's see now we just need to add a button so let's go to post create and let's just copy this button and paste it below and let's delete this class and let's check it so looking good so now let's try submitting it so john doe this is a comment and let's post it success uh, we see a json object of the new comment that we have just created and we can also find this record inside the database so let's add a few more comments so we have some more data to work with so i created a few more records so now let's pass these comments to the post.show view so let's go to post controller show method and let's pass comments so comment model where post id is equal to post id and let's call a get method and we need to import the comment class at the top and now inside the show page under the form let's iterate and display all the comments so for each comments has comment let's create a div with class margin top three and let's add a paragraph to display comment 
author and text. So let's go back to the browser and let's refresh the page. And we can see comments under the form. Excellent. Um, but there's an easier and more Laravel-like way to fetch comments that belong to the post. So we can call a comments method on the post and get. So in order for this work, let's go to the post model and let's create a method comments. So public function comments and this should return has many comment class and let's type hint that this method returns has many and let's import it at the top so use eliminate database eloquent relations and has many so behind the scenes has many method will go to the comments table and search for the comments where post cd is equal to this post cd so if we refresh the page we still see the comments being loaded so now let's try submitting the form again. It would be nice that instead of seeing this JSON blob, we would be redirected back to the post show page. So let's fix that. So inside comments controller, instead of returning the comment, let's return a redirect back to the post show page. So return back. And let's add return type. So this will be a direct response and let's test it so bob smith and text will be hello world post and as you can see after submitting the form we are being redirected back to the show page and at the bottom we can see this new comment excellent but i can still see that uh, this label is missing some margin on the top. So let's fix it. So it should be block. Much better. So now let's style these comments. So let's wrap this for each statement inside a div. And the div should have a class of margin top six. And we can actually delete everything right here and create a div with class margin bottom of five um, background white padding on the sides and padding on top and bottom let's make the border rounded small um, let's add a shadow medium and inside it let's create another div uh, let's set display to flex and we can add a comment for us so this section will be for the avatar of the offer so this will be a div with a class of margin right free flex flex column and justify center so let's create a div and right here let's add a php snippet so let's explode the comment offer name into a parts. So basically this method will split the string into array. So if the user has a name, a middle name and a last name, the parts will contain those three names. And what we want to do is create a initial is variable so so let's take the parts array um, so the first name and the first letter and add it to parts let's pick the last part minus one and also the first character and let's uppercase those values so we can actually show what we get so initials and let's refresh it 
Oh, this should be initials. So let's refresh and we can see the initials being loaded. So let's add some styles. So this should be a span and let's add it a background color gray padding and let's make it rounded full. It looks good. Now under the avatar div, let's create another div. So display flex, flex column, and justify content center. And let's add a paragraph to display comment author and comment created at the for humans so let's add a class of margin right font bold and for this paragraph text gray 600 so as you can see Diff for humans makes the date more readable. So if you remove this, we just see a simple date object. But this way it looks a little bit more clear. So under this diff, or actually below this flex diff, let's create a div of class margin top free and this should display the comment text much better. Now, if you remove the required attribute from the comment inputs right here and from the text area, so let's try submitting the form. So it seems like nothing is happening but actually we get validation errors, we just don't display them. So let's fix it. So below the text area, let's create a div. Actually, first let's check if there are any errors. So if and if and inside it, let's create a div class margin top six. And let's add an ordered list with a class of background red 100, add some padding and rounded medium. And let's just display the error. So let's try submitting the form now. Uh, I made a typo, so I actually have to, for each errors, all as error, and for each and let's just display the error so submit and we can see the validation errors um, but what happens if user types a long comment and does not type the name and submits it um, he loses all the data so let's prefill the inputs using the old helper so right here let's add value equals old offer and the same for the text area so old text and now if we type a long comment leave this input empty submit we don't lose this data so now let's return those required attributes So now let's start working on a comment removal functionality. So firstly, let's create a new route. So route delete, and we'll go to comments, comment and comments controller class destroy action. So again, like we did in this case, we provide the comment parameter. So the Laravel will expect the URL to look something like this. So comments and comment ID. So let's create a destroy method. 
public function destroy and let's inject a comment model so the way this will work is in case a url is comment slash one when the request comes and goes to the comment controller because you type in that comment right here laravel will check inside the comments table and try to find a model for that record if laravel fails to find the record it will throw an exception but if it finds the model it injects it into this method and we can use this comment so if a model is found we can call a method delete and let's return hey redirect back so redirect response so now we can create a delete button on the front end so inside the comments for each div right here actually under the comment text let's add a form action will go to comments comment id the method will be post and class margin bottom zero margin top three and Let's add TSRF hidden input and also let's tell the form to use a delete method instead of post and let's add a button delete and class should be text small some padding border gray 400 shadow small rounded medium and on hover let's make the shadow medium and type will be submit so let's test it um, we can see the button so let's delete this is a comment too um, it seems to be working correctly so let's check in the database let's refresh it and the comment was deleted excellent now for the final step let's add the comment pagination so there are many ways to create pagination inside laravel the simplest is by using the paginate method on the query builder so if you go to post controller to the show method uh, we can instead of using get let's add paginate and pass value of one so this tells to only fetch one comment per page and if you go to the show page at the top let's die and dump comments and see what we get so as you can see, uh, the paginate method returns a length aware paginator object. Now, in order to show the page navigation, it's as easy as calling a links method on the comments variable. So let's delete this. And at the end of the for each, let's add comments links. And if you go back to the browser, uh, we can see the pagination at the bottom so currently i set it to display one comment per page so let's set it a more reasonable amount maybe five so five comments are displayed per page in total there are seven comments so two pages and it seems to be working correctly so the paginate method automatically takes care of setting the queries limits and offset based on the current page being viewed by the user so by default um, uh, the current page is detected by the value of the query string parameter so in this case page 2 if we set it to page 1 it will load the page 1 or if we don't have any kind of parameter it will still load the page one this value is automatically detected by laravel and it's also and automatically inserted into the links generated by the paginator so that's it for this video i hope you find it helpful and see you on the next one